uh, Red Eye Reader, Bookheads, Glum World, with a big good interview coming. A uh, little short uh, recap is uh, our history. I was uh, masquerading or undercover from myself and masquerading as a uh, uh, community relations manager at Barnes and Noble, and, and I didn't find myself, but I had a lot of fun. And uh, I think it was 2001 or 2002. Uh, I don't know how she got there, but we were we were putting this young girl. I thought she was about 13 or 14, uh, full blown on the calendar of events. We print a thousand copies out. We give her full advertising and, and big signs, just like we treat a big author. And I, I don't remember how she got there, uh, to to be honest with you, um, and how it developed, but. We had a nice turnout. Uh, all things went good. A year or two later, she's winning the uh, best or best and up and coming uh, regional folk singer. And uh, here it is, uh, eight or nine years later. And I think you'll be surprised if if you're not familiar with her, you will be happily surprised. She hails from Dewitt. She now lives in Brooklyn. And uh, I've always wanted to do this when I was in newspaper business. Anyways, her name is Haley Wojcik, pronounced Wojcik. And here's a copy of her newest CD, and she has innovations with this that are uh, amazing. So I'll leave it at that, and we'll turn uh, right away to the interview. Thanks. We'll see you later. Thank you very, very much for taking the time wow. to Thank come you. on and, and sit with us, and it's a real treat to see you. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Well, Haley, when when you were uh, you you had just won, I think a, a regional award for like best uh, or most promising folk singer. Uh, mm -hmm. This is like eight years ago, six, yeah. seven, eight years ago. Is that from like the journal or something? Or I, I don't remember. All I remember is that when you won that, I thought, well, gee, there's, here's the next Joan Baez. Well, I was really wrong. <laughs> But, uh, and I know you don't consider yourself in that category anymore, do you, folk singer? I'm doing more rock-oriented stuff now, so, but, um, you know, maybe someday I'll make another acoustic record. That's the direction? I mean, you, you don't know the direction, or you have... Well, I'm definitely uh, heading towards a kind of, um, uh, definitely a more a stripped-down rock kind of duo that I'm, I, I'm just playing with uh, myself and a drummer, um, uh, so, so And, kind of and at one time you considered signing a contract with a company, am I mistaken about that, or? Well, it didn't really get that far, <laughs> <Didn't> <laughs> but, um, make it. you know, there's a million of those stories for, I yeah. mean, not for me, just people in general, but. Right. Just kind of, it's been a series of. You you backed out. Am I right in that? I uh, yeah, sort of a bit, maybe a bit of a smart ass back then. And well, you must have had a good reason. I mean, what 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 motivated you to not well, go ahead with it? I, I think um, I think I've always been really uh, afraid of the notion of not having like complete control over anything and so I don't know you know it was probably mostly in my head as far as because it hadn't gotten it to any point yeah. yet but it was just more of a, a fear of and I was like 16 and yeah. also I uh, you know didn't really know what I wanted at that point Not, you know well, at age 16, uh, you're really talented to, to even be in that kind of a situation in the first place so you yeah I mean I was definitely too green then so I'm you know kind of glad now for now I sometimes I kick myself because it's like I don't know what would have happened and maybe I screwed myself over but also I was pretty pretty green back then so if I had gotten some sort of level of attention I might have you know made some bad choices might have gotten opted out uh, yeah what might've. you really wanted to yeah do. so I think I've become better as an artist and a writer and everything over the years, so I might not have might not have grown in the same way if I had. Right. Been, you know, you never. It's know. nice to have control. Yeah. 
uh, you know, you came from DeWitt, and you grew up in DeWitt, and uh, uh, I don't know if this is not a trick question or anything, but other than genetics, uh, your environment, some something triggered something in you to take up music and, and song and, and entertain, and if you got a, a handle on that, I mean, do you know what it was that motivated you, that triggered uh, something? I, um, well, I, I've always been interested in, in art, I guess, in different capacities, and I, um, used to do a lot of drawing and painting and stuff, and then I guess it was just sort of a transition. Uh, I got a, my dad bought a guitar for me um, that a friend of his was selling when I was in like seventh grade, and um, it just seemed like the thing to do. It started as a pretty casual thing, and then I just sort of got into it. I've also always really liked writing, so it's like, in a lot of ways, I kind of consider myself a songwriter first. Not that I would not that I think of myself as someone who writes for other people, but just oh. that's kind of always been like the central point of my, I guess, identity as an artist. Uh, and, and to back up just a, a bit, you went to Western mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yes. And from there, uh, to compress time a little bit, you went to Brooklyn. And uh, what was your choice in going there? What was your motivation in moving there? Um, well, I wanted to you know, I am, I am pursuing music out there, and, uh, you know, I, I knew that I really wanted to do it for real and uh, try to make some things happen, and unfortunately, there's just not a whole lot happening in, in Kalamazoo, let alone, you know, in Michigan, let alone Kalamazoo. So, um, so I, did, uh, I did move out there right shortly after graduating, a few months after graduating, and, um, there, and of course you like it. Uh, I love it, yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I still love coming home and yeah. I still identify heavily with the Midwest, but I yeah. but I love it out there. So you're singing, and uh, I have seen a couple of your videos, I must say I like them, Thank and you. your, your concept, I mean, it was new to me, I don't know if it is to anybody else, but uh, was to do a, a video for each one of your cuts on a, on a CD, is it? Yeah, yeah that's that what correct? I'm. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've been making videos. Uh, I like that. Uh, nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun. I mean, it started out. Um, I made the first video I made was for the song Pumpkin Teeth, and um, I made that with a friend, a fellow musician, a friend of mine named Julie Peel, um, and uh, and then I I started um, working with uh, with my now I guess video production partner and uh, and manager uh, Audrey Culper and we have a, a production company we've started called Blood Bunny and we're called what? Blood Bunny. Blood Bunny. And we are in the process of making our first video for someone else which is for Julie actually Julie Peel for her song Living in a Movie uh, but we've been working on all of my videos uh, you know co-directing co producing all all of the videos for my record so we're we're, we're plugging away at it